Gilstrap.com. In studio with New York Times best-selling author John Gilstrap. Good morning. Also, he is a veteran of the U.S. Marine Corps Sergeant Bill Kearns, who soon will be retiring from the Berkeley County Health Department. Yes, on to some other things in my life. Mainly co-hosting. Mainly co-hosting. Mainly co-hosting. <laughs> I have no time for anything else. I'll have to get Phil to help me with my portfolio for all the money that I'll make um, co-hosting. Oh, it was barrels full of stuff. <laughs> Barrel. Barrels of something. Barrels. <laughs> you used to call that monkeys. <laughs> Whatever the currency is, is what you'll be able to spend it on. What, are you still going to be preaching? I, uh, well, occasionally. When I get a chance, I'll spend a little bit more time there and spend some time with Tim at the rescue mission uh, the other night. So he's talking to me about going there and doing some classes. So. See, everybody's pulling at you. <laughs> everybody's pulling. You never retired long in Berkeley County. No, no, not at all. There's always uh, something to do. Yeah. Uh, our guest in this segment is from Habitat uh, for Humanity. That's uh, Robin Key. She is the executive director. Robin, welcome back. Good to see you again. Thank you. Good to be here. Yeah. Uh, when was the last time you folks uh, put together a home there, a building project? Um, we closed on one in the end of 19, 22. 22. 22, yeah. And when's your next one? Um, should be starting after the first of the year. And where are you going to be doing this one? Um, it's going to be on East Burke Street in Martinsburg. How does that work? So do you do you find the property? Uh, does someone find it for you? Does a person say, hey, do this here? Well, how does it work? All of those things. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Um, we look for property, um, try to keep an eye out for something that you know is reasonable. Our whole goal is to keep the cost of the home affordable. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times people are donated. That This lot was donated to us by a lady. Her husband had left it to her, and she didn't know what in the world to do with it. And so she decided that she thought giving it the habitat so someone could get a home on it would be the best thing to do. So Give me the nuts and bolts of the operation. Someone, someone donates a lot, and then mm -hmm. how do you get all the goods together and the people together to, to raise the structure? Okay, so we, you know, Habitat, to kind of give you a little history, Habitat works um, basically off of donations, big time. Mm -hmm. um, we do get grants. Um, we have a small staff. Um, we don't have a contractor on board or anything, so we always have to get, um, hire, do an MOU with a contractor out there that will oversee the property, the build for us. Um, then we just start putting money together. We get a lot of our funds from the city of Martinsburg and then Eastern Panel Home Consortium um, for our CHODO funds. Um, we do grants through West Virginia Housing Development Fund. Um, this time we get a first energy grant and then we have our own construction funds that come in from people just donating and also from um, like our restore and that sort of thing. So once we have everything together, then we um, try to um, and identify the lot. We try to um, find a family. This time we already had the family identified and approved. Um, and then from there, we just start coordinating. The site supervisor starts coordinating with um, different contractors to do the different parts of the work. Um, we work with um, Job Corps. Um, we work with James Rumsey. Um, so they all come in and, and do bring their students in, mm -hmm. helping the students learn and get that on, you know, firsthand experience while it's also helping us keep down the cost. You mentioned your restore. Mm -hmm. What is the restore? And I understand you're reopening the restore soon. It is now open. Um, it's The restore is a place where people can donate um, gently used items, whether it be furniture, appliances, um, tools, um, any type of construction materials, anything that people can use to um, either make repairs in their home or furnish their homes. Um, the restore is a great thing for the community. As, you know, we hire people um, we pay our taxes we pay leasing cost and all that sort of thing so we're definitely contributing to the community we're also doing um for environment it's very good for the environment because we're keeping things out of the landfill mm -hmm. um, many people tell us oh well if you can't get it i'm just going to take it to the landfill it's like no 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 you know because <laughs> a lot of people come in and they buy something and they upcycle it you know they make it into something else or you know they use it for um what it's intended for so mm -hmm. that's very helpful very good. And how can people get in touch with you to volunteer? Um, actually, you can call um, for, for the Restore. You can call the Restore number, um, which is 681-260-6007. Or for our bills, you could just call our office at 304-263-3154. Or they can go to um, Volunteer Hub. Um, which is where we have volunteers register and then we send out emails and everything will go to them so that they can see what's available uh, you know we've got a site 
open this Saturday or we've got a spot at the um, you know, we've got a training coming up mm-hmm. or whatever. And that is a website. Um, it's habitatep.volunteerhub.com. And, and where is the ReStore physical located? 1353 Edwin Miller Boulevard. Not far from here. No, it's really close. It's very convenient. Um, our sign's now working. <laughs> Yay, <laughs> so you sign. can see it after dark and everything. Um, it's open Wednesday through Saturday mm-hmm. from um, 10 o'clock to 5 o'clock. Um, donations can be made there at the store the, during those times, um, basically between 11 and 3, I think, at the back of the store. Um, so, and Do you have a fundraiser coming up any time in the near future? We are going to be participating in um, Giving Tuesday. And then we're also doing um, the let's see, community trees at Lights on the Lake in yes, Jefferson that's County. very popular. We have a tree down there as well mm-hmm. so that people can vote for and help us raise money. And uh, for Giving Tuesday, how do they find you to make a donation? Well, we're, uh, we're getting ready to start putting things out on our Facebook page, and we're actually going to have a QR code so that you can just scan that, and it'll take you right to where you need to go. Great. Mr. Kearns. So, Robin, I, I, I was really interested, when, and it sparked interest when you said about um, working cooperatively with James Rumsey. Mm-hmm. I'm a product of uh, one of their classes from the early 80s um, and doing electrical. And, you know, I think that's a great opportunity to have the students that they can go out and apply what they've learned in class because mm-hmm. it lets them know, is this something I really want to do? Um, and I think that really um, wettens their appetite um, to be able to get out and do that. Um, so great job on doing that. Thank um, you. I have a question for you. You said the last last house was, I guess, completed in 2022? Mm-hmm. So now you're looking at doing another. Does it take that long in the planning process to to get? I mean, it seems like a long t- gap in between when you're getting ready to do that one now versus when you completed the last one. Yeah, and that is one of my goals is to get things moving a little faster. So when we're done one, we're ready to start the other. COVID just slowed everything down. Oh, don't I know. <laughs> <laughs> it, it shut the sites down. Um, you know, it, it, so it took us a while to get people back into wanting to be out volunteering. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's just a matter of, you know, how things are going and, you know, what, what happens and uh, red tape. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we have to go through our properties all have to go through environmentals and that sort of thing. So all that stuff just takes time. So. And what's your qualifiers for people that are are, are going to be the um, recipients of these homes? What's the qualifiers for them? I mean, do they have to put in sweat equity within the home that they're going to receive? They do. And Looks they... like you were prepared for that question. Yeah. <laughs> Shuffling your papers there. <laughs> well, you know how sometimes when somebody asks you a question and your mind kind of goes, ah. Oh. Uh, all the time. <laughs> So anyway, our families have to um, have lived here in Berkeley County for, well, up the tri-state, well, not just tri-state, tri-county area for a year. Um, they have to have steady income. Um, luckily, since we finance the projects ourselves um, and they get the loan through us, we're able to look at things that a little differently than a normal bank would. So where, you know, they might have a few little um, collections on there, we can overlook that where a bank may not so um, but they do have to have steady income Um, they have to be a u.s citizen or a permanent alien permanent resident they have to be living in substandard housing now that could mean overcrowded Um, it could mean unaffordable it could mean um, living in like um, subsidized housing or it could be you know there's definitely physical problems with the property so those all have to be documented, and they also have to show us that they can save money. They have to be willing to, we call it partner, we call them our partner families. They have to be willing to do sweat equity. Um, the amount of hours depends on how many adults are in the household. Um, and they also have to be willing to go through like home buyer education, um, financial counseling, budget and credit counseling, that sort of thing. Um, and we partner with Telemon Corporation to do that. We've had them on the show before. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised you were able to finish a home in 2022. It was so hard to get lumber, and it was so expensive at that time. Yes. It's not much cheaper right now. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you just Just described the health department edition over there. It's not much cheaper. Not much cheaper now. (laughs) You just described a lot of people Mm -hmm. when when that all filters out, and ultimately there's one house. Mm -hmm. So how is that final selection made? 
Well, first of all, we when we get ready to do a build, we have what we call homeowners orientation. So anybody that's called us over the past from the time the last selection was made, we notify them and say, hey, we're going to be doing this homeowner orientation. You're welcome to come in and hear about it. So when we, we do that, anybody that attends that orientation is then eligible to submit an application if they feel that they are eligible. A lot of times we were able to weed people out because they're over income or they don't meet some of the criteria, um, that sort of thing. And sometimes we know that on this lot, we're only going to be able to build a two bedroom home or a three bedroom home and they've got eight people in a family. So, you know, those kind of things are mm -hmm. just natural selections. Um, but once we get it down to a few files, you know, we look at the need, you know, somebody that is just maybe needing another bedroom may not be as much in need as somebody that's got mold growing out of their you know all around their plumbing and their ceilings and that sort of thing so those kind of things are looked at as well i um, mean it all goes to our family selection committee they look at all that stuff they look at the credit you know who's going to be the best person that's going to be able to support this home i'm um, not just right now but down the road and then uh, look at that need and then once they determine um, who that person is or that family is, it goes to our board and the board approves the partner family. And then is it is it free to them or is, is there an ongoing payment? Is there some kind of mortgage? You say it's different than a bank, which implies there's some kind of payment that's involved. Right, they, they definitely have a mortgage. So when, when the house is done, we have it appraised and there's whatever the value is, um, it, that's the sale price. But our family's payment can never be more than 30% of their monthly income. And that includes their um, principal and their insurance. Um, there is no interest, it's a 0% loan. Mm -hmm. So we take whatever that amount is. So let's say we had a $200,000 appraisal sales price. Based on their income, they can only make payments on 100,000. So that's what their loan would be. And that's over 20 or 30 years um, at zero percent interest and then what's left the remainder then between the two hundred thousand and that hundred thousand goes into a soft second and if they stay in the home for 10 years that kind of reduces a tenth each year they're in the home and so after 10 years they don't know that other set that other second so are they then it sounds like a great investment opportunity mm -hmm. so are they then free to sell it, it yeah, they can always sell it, um, but if they would sell it within that first 10 years, of course, they'd have to pay the remainder of the second and mm -hmm. whatever they owe on the first. And then after that 10 years, they just have to pay what, what they owe on their principal. That's interesting. I'm, and I'm on your website here, too. You also have a home preservation repair program yes. for people. Mm -hmm. Why don't you talk about that? Okay, we're just getting that started. Um, we've only done one job. We're working on our second one. Um, job Corps is going to be helping us with the labor on that one. Um, it's for small exterior repairs. Um, it's painting, um, landscaping, maybe power washing the outside of a home, um, fixing um, their porch, um, their deck, something like that. It's nothing major. It's just a way for us to get out there and help people be able to remain in their home safely um, until we can raise more money and expand the program. Well, you think about uh, gravity is hard on people. So you think about fixing stairs or decks, an easy repair mm -hmm. can cause, the lack of an easy repair can cause very serious injuries, mm -hmm. especially for you know people who, as they get older, become infirm. That's Yeah, the lady we're gonna be working on her house, her one deck in the back, you, you can put your foot through it, you know, so she walks on out on a, with a, in a walker, okay. with a walker, oh, so, right. you Goodness. know. Is there a tax implication for forgiveness of any loans or the a reduction in the price of the home? Any idea? I don't think so. Not a tax, no. I know if you have like a student loan and part of it gets forgiven, sometimes that can be uh, um, charged as income to you when you go to do your taxes. I know you're not a CPA, yeah. but I just thought I'd... <laughs> so that's kind of out of my league. Yeah. <laughs> but well, I, I've never heard of that. Right. I've never heard anybody talk about it. Okay, very good. Well, how much of a budget do you need to operate each year? Um, I would say we're probably looking at at least just to operate, um, you know, forty, fifty thousand dollars. When you talk about salary and leases and all that sort of thing, and that's where the restore is going to really help, mm -hmm. um, because that way, should once we get that up and running well, and you know, bringing in that profit, we'll be able to use that not only to 
through our operations of the store and our office, but also then to help put build homes. So that's that's our goal is to get the revenue coming in from there. So if I have a piece of furniture, I bring it to the restore and I can donate it to you, or do you, do you buy it from me at a, at a cheap price? Actually, we just give you a, a thing you can use on your taxes. Like Donation a form. Uh -huh. All right. What yeah. what can you accept? What can't you accept at the restore? Um, can you take appliances? It, we do take appliances. We do take furniture. Um, we we do not accept stuff like anything for a baby, like hot chairs, play pens, that sort of thing. There's too much liability there. Mm -hmm. um, we do not take partial cans of paint. We can take full cans of paint. Um, I'm going to assume mattresses and things of yeah, that we nature. We don't take you don't mattresses. Take... We take the beds, mm -hmm. um, but we don't take the, frames, the mattresses. But yes. Not the mattresses. Um, and a lot of people, we have dishes. Um, we have any type of like plumbing supplies. Sometimes they just drop off a whole box of um, connectors or something. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, nails, anything to, for construction or home repairs, sinks. We've had sinks, tubs, toilets. Lumber? Lumber. Mm hmm. Yeah. So we're reaching out to the various um, contractors and letting them know we're there. Um, you know, I, I tell them, you know, I, I know how our build sites are at the end. You got a little bit of this, mm -hmm. a little bit of that. Can't really do anything with any of it. But, you know, in the right hands, that could be you know, a treasure to somebody. So if they could bring it to us. Very practical question from the Facebook page. Do you bring the donations to the front door? And if not, how do you get to the back door? Okay, you take them to the back door. And to do that, you go down and you go between Taco Bell and is it Mako, I think it's on the end of that building. And you go around, you go behind, and come around behind the post office, and we're right beside the post office. And you get yourself a little snack at Taco Bell on the way home. Yeah, yeah. Right, make a donation, get Great. something to eat. Exactly. It's a good day. Do you get United Way funding? Um, we, we participate in some United Way things, like the Unity Campaign. Mm -hmm. So in that way, you know, the money we raise goes through United Way, that sort of thing. So. And about the Eastern West Virginia Community Foundation? We have gotten funds from them as well. Do you uh, have people leave things to you in their will? Is that possible? It's very possible. Um, it has not happened since I've been there, but I'm, I'm sure it's probably happened in the past, and hopefully it will happen in the future. And how many volunteers do you need to pull off a project? Lots and lots. Um, the reason being is um, the family, we try to schedule the work on the site around the family's schedule. So because they have to put in that time on the site. So it's just some people can work Saturdays, some people can work Fridays, you know, so we need lots of people. So we always have all the, the times filled up. Mm -hmm. And how do you make sure you have the appropriate expertise for each part of the job that goes into building a house? I'm thinking concrete. As an example, you know, that's not. <laughs> you, have to, you have to have expertise for concrete. Yeah. Well, but with the rebar and the rest of it, I would think, yeah. It's, it's... Well, that part is up to our site supervisor, and he hires the contractor. Some of the work is done by licensed contractors. Concrete would be one of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a good Electrical thing. would be another. Another, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Rumsey's going to be doing the electrical. So mm -hmm. that gentleman, mm -hmm. Mr. Butler, I think yep. he's a master electrician. He so, is. you know, it's. It'll all be under him and then overseen by our contractor. And if you, if you mentioned this earlier when John asked about sweat equity, my apologies, but uh, about how many hours are expected to be worked by the family that gets the home? Okay, so if there's one adult in the household, there has to be at least 250 hours. Mm -hmm. If there's two adults in the household, it jumps to 500. Um, but of that, 100 hours has to be completed on their home per adult. The others can be made up by the home, but can also be made up by their family, um, other volunteers. Those all count as sweat equity hours. Um, and they can also do sweat get some sweat equity by going to their home buyer ed class. That's surprisingly to, difficult to say. It mm -hmm. should be an easier <laughs> flow, shouldn't it? Yeah. But it is difficult. <laughs> um, but they can do home buyer ed. They can do budget and credit counseling. They get credit for all of that. Um, they also help us out at events. Sometimes they just come and they talk about their experience or mm -hmm. what Habitat means to them, or they hand out literature. Um, they can also work in a restore now that it's open, mm -hmm. and they can get sweat equity that way. So we try to make it, you know, as easy for them as possible, but it is definitely a requirement that they have to fulfill. Where do you do the home buyer ed programs? They do that at Telemon. Telemon does mm -hmm. that? Yes. Okay. And that's just learning about loans and taking care of a home and whatever? Is that basically what that is? Yeah. learning. Or, you know, sometimes it helps them decide if they're ready or not. When, sure. they, when they hear all about what's going to be involved, sometimes it's like – 
nope, not ready yet. Um, and then it also tells them things that they might not have known or thought about, you know, oh, I'm going to have a yard to mow or, you know, I'm going to have to have a mower and just all mm-hmm. kinds of things like that and mm-hmm. how loans work and their, their responsibility as a homeowner and how to maintain that home. Okay. Uh, about a minute left. Go ahead and take it and uh, tell anybody whatever message you want to give out about Habitat for Humanity. Okay. Well, first of all, I just want to thank the community because they are um, behind us and they support us, and we really appreciate that and couldn't do what we do without them. Um, I'd love to, if everybody could support us in our upcoming events, um, the unit, not the unity campaign, I'm sorry, Giving Tuesday. Um, watch our Facebook page. We will have a um, button there for you, a QR code you can just scan and donate. Um, go to the Lights on the Lake this, this year and vote for our tree. They're also having a social media event that you can get on there and vote for, I think it's a dollar a vote, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. So, um, But thank you. You're welcome. How do, how do we reach you for more information about Habitat for Humanity, Robin? Um, you can reach me at um, 304-263-3154, or you can email me at rkeys at habitatep.org. Great to have you here. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. I hope your partner feels better there. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> they made you come in solo, huh? Yeah. yeah <laughs> but no, you I did a great job. You did a great job. Thank you.